Do the souls of the dead meet with one another? There is nothing in the Quran that confirms or denies this entire realm. However, some ulama have derived implicit evidences. So for example, in Surah An-Nisa, verse 69, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهْدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا Those who obey Allah and His Messenger shall be with the ones whom Allah has favored. The Nabiyyin, the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, and the Salihin, and what a great companionship. What a great group to be with. Ibn al-Qayyim writes in his book, Kitab al-Ruh, that this being with the group is something that occurs in this world and in the Barzakh and in Jannah. And that is because a person is with those whom he loves. And other scholars as well have derived from the verse of Ali Imran. Don't think the ones who have died in the way of Allah are dead. No, they are alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are looking forward to the good news to the Bashara from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are waiting for those that lam yalhaqu bihim they haven't yet come to them the fact that they're anticipating the next group that hasn't yet arrived indicates what? That they are going to meet the arwah. So this is, I would say, a very good indirect evidence for this regard. However, both of these evidences deal with meeting with the arwah of the dead. So this is a very clear indirect indication. However, there is an explicit hadith that solves this issue, narrated from Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala an, when the time of death comes for the believer, that the malaika of mercy come, the malaika say, come out We've done all of this. They will go up, they will come down, the angels will praise them, the angels will say, what beautiful perfume. Then, this is a phrase I did not do when we began because I wanted to delay it here. Then, they will bring this new ruh to the arwah of the believers. So, the new soul will meet the soul of the believers. When the believers meet this newcomer, they are happier than when one of you receives a long awaited visitor coming back from a journey. Suppose your son has gone, your mother has gone, your daughter has gone, your wife has gone. When they come back, you are so happy. The Prophet ﷺ said, the believers are happier when they see their new friend, the new mu'min coming from this world that they haven't met for so long. They are happier than this. So the arwah of the dead, they ask him about what happened with so-and-so, what happened with so-and-so. So they want to hear the news of what's happening in this dunya. The new mayit, the newly dead person we should say, is going to update the others about what has happened with so and so. Some of them will say, let him rest. He has just exited the misery of this world. Then the mayyit will say, you asked about so and so. The person you asked me about, he's already dead. Hasn't he come here? Where is he? And they say, oh, this means he has gone down there, not up here. And this is an indication that the one who goes to Adhab al-Qabr is disconnected from speaking and talking, which is totally understandable. They don't have the luxuries of meeting and interacting and greeting. That is for the believers. That is for the arwah of the salihin, of the awliya, of the muttaqin. And then the hadith goes on about the kafir and the adab that comes after him. Will the souls of the righteous go to sleep or will they be awake? And I mentioned this, that in reality we do not know. There is one and only one narration in which the soul is told, go ahead and sleep and it will fall into a sleep until the day of judgment. How do we reconcile this with the hadith I just mentioned? That they're going to be interacting with the people who come. Allah knows best. If someone were to say, hypothetically, that they are active for a time frame and then they are told to go to sleep. In the end of the day, we do not know and it is a different paradigm. And our minds cannot understand the time and how time takes place in the barzakh. But looking at the evidences, a possible interpretation is what I have said. That they will be active for a period of time from our dunya's perspective. And perhaps, perhaps, the more iman they have, the more active they will be. Hence, the shaheed will always be alive. And the Prophets are alive in their graves. So perhaps to the level of their iman, they shall remain active as well in the barzakh before they are told to go to sleep. And this is for the righteous. As for the unrighteous, we know that they will be punished until the trumpet is blown.